Hello and welcome to the GT Planet Karting Series for round six of the championship here today at Silverstone. My name is Tom Brooks and joining me as ever alongside me, it's Andrew Mather. Hello, Andrew. How are you? Hi, Tom. I'm very good. And yeah, can't wait for some more exciting action here in the karting series. It's been a great season so far and can't wait for to get this one started. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, last time, Dominated by number 26, Zizek, out in front in Madrid for round five. He took a very clean sweep, 10 seconds, his overall lead against GTP Jammy, it was, on the top step of the podium. It was very, very interesting in the KF class, and I'm fairly sure we're set for more action-packed racing, as you said, Andrew. Uh, but we'll cross over to that in just a few moments' time. And so the first heat of the day here at Silverstone, it is indeed heat A, of course. And we've got an action-packed lineup for you. You can see Mr. Racing Line there on pole position. Alongside him is Kralu. Then D15, 1998 in third with Jajak. Of course, the winner last time out in Madrid in fourth. Haas Gaming, 96 in fifth. Little Regret, 265, sixth. Famine in seventh. Makozi Academic lining in eighth. And then Midnight Rider, 32, rounding out the grid in ninth position overall. So we wait for the lights to come on then. And the race is underway here at Silverstone for the first heat of the day. And initially a very good start off the front row of the grid then. And coming down, heading in towards turn one we go now. And it's a very clean start there, Andrew. Everyone getting away very, very nicely at the top of the front. Yeah, very good to see. It's a very uh, tight first corner, the right-hander, and then going into this long 180-degree left-hander before you start going down the straight but yep all carts have made it through the first half of the lap and it's a going to be a full-on race to the finish no doubt absolutely we can see jay jet there sitting in i think second place at the moment just being challenged i believe by uh, mr racing line in third place at the moment uh, coming around the right hander and then the left they go difficult to tell you what's going on without the graphics i'm afraid to say hopefully we'll get them back on in just a uh, few moments time couple of technical issues hindering us here but nonetheless everyone getting away cleanly no contact throughout the field as we can see a bit of an overtake there up the inside oh and some contact one of the cards going around unbelievable there it is Kralu in the blue card of course who's sitting there and looking to take the lead heading in towards turn one around the outside maybe oh no but he's gonna get mugged by Mr Racing Line is he now the two cards go side by side this is absolutely fantastic racing Andrew on the second lap here really good stuff everyone being very considerate to each other just giving enough room to get everybody around the corner and here we go side by side down the straight who's going to get it into the left hander now just a little bit more uh straight line speed for can't quite work who that out that is in the lead at the moment trying to look around the outside is second place it's uh number oh i can't quite work out what it is without the graphics apologies tom but yes, uh jj uh J jack in the lead then I've just heard in my ear. J Jack leading from Mr. Racing Line. Third place still As we finish lap two. Yep, of course. Uh, J Jack there still in the uh, lead of this race. Crayley there sitting in third place in that blue cart and looking to get a little bit of a challenge on at the moment. He's going to be able to overtake Mr. Racing Line as they come in towards the third lap. Then all oh, bit sideways there from Crayley though and loses it and loses out on two positions. Such a simple mistake there, Andrew, but he's now down into about fifth or sixth place and that's really going to hinder his progress for the rest of this race. Yes, but in some respects that was quite a good save because yes, he's fallen to sixth, but he's still in this race good amount of time to go still a chance to pull it back and don't cr don't count Kralu out yet he's still in this yep still mr uh sorry mr racing line in second place at the moment uh famine a bit further down the order than he would like to be at the moment but still plenty of time left in this race for things to change but it is still jayjet then leading from Mr. Racing Line at the moment as they come on to start their fourth lap. Someone going a little bit wide there out of the uh, penultimate corner, but keeping things back underway in towards the first right at left chicane. A very difficult part of the lap, but very, very challenging for all drivers involved as well. Fantastic driving from everybody throughout the field at the moment. And a very, very dominant display of driving from uh, number 26, Zizek at the uh, moment but we'll see what Kralu can do in the latter part of this race and don't count out D15 at 19 and 98 as well he's starting in a very good position on the grid but unfortunately things have not gone his way so far but will time will tell of course as uh, the race progresses onwards 
uh, suffering some technical issues, I'm afraid to say, up here in the commentary box. Our stream has frozen for the time being. Uh, so we'll give you information as and when we can uh, receive it, of course. But I'm hopefully sure that the stream will get back underway fairly shortly and we'll have some more graphics for you and give you a more in-depth look at the racing here at uh, Silverstone today. So a warning there for number 186, that's track limits. Of course, Midnight Rider 32, so he's exceeding the uh, li limits as we can see. So getting a little bit wide, of course, you're allowed two wheels off the track, but no more. So a bit of a disappointment there for Midnight Rider 32. Plenty of the race, though, to sort himself out and get things back facing the right way. Uh, but JJ, though, I have to say, Andrew, having a very, very competent run in this race so far. Absolutely. It's been a great first heat for him and just showing the class, which he's shown all season. He's really come on through the season and started to dominate in this series. Good little battle here coming through the latter part of the circuit, the Stowe circuit. Very technical in the second half with the... Oh, there's almost a spin there into the last corner. But it's still everybody in this race. Coming yep. down the straight, number 72 there. Keeping things facing the right way certainly is a challenge. Picturesque conditions, as you can see here in Northamptonshire today. Great to see. Uh, not so much of a challenge for the drivers to face, but uh, everyone keeping it on track and facing the right way, which is a very, very important part of uh, competitive racing, as I'm sure you know. We see there Kralu in the forefront of your shot coming down the back straight in towards that left hand. It's such a deceleration these carts have got. And just how easy is it to get, carry a little bit too much speed into there, Andrew, and have a bit more oversteer than you'd like? Uh, very, very easy indeed. There's not much runoff on the outside of that corner, and it doesn't depend. It doesn't depend on what car you're in. It can be so tempting coming down that back straight, that long back straight, to take so much speed into the corner. But if you're slightly offline, you could be having a little trip into the grass on the outside. You also want to get the speed off to prepare yourself for that next series of corners, the right, then left, and then right again. So it's a very important corner to. A, defend your line, and B, set yourself up to get the lap times and the speed up for the following corners. Pleased to say we have now got the graphics back, as you can see on screen. So as we uh, know, it's JJ still leading the way. The Frenchman, of course, who's having a very, very competent run in the championship so far. Things going to be interesting as we go in towards Willow Springs and, of course, the finale at Brands Hatch as well. Uh, Mr. Racing Line still there in third place, the Danish driver, having a very good run so far. Kralu in fourth at the moment. Little Regret 265 in sixth, in fifth, sorry, rather. Famine close behind, the only Briton in this race on home turf in sixth place. Haas Gaming, the uh, Portuguese driver, of course, who we were just looking at a few moments ago in the red cart. He is in seventh place. Midnight Rider 32, of course, who was warned about track limits earlier on, stuck in eighth. And Mikosi Academic, I'm afraid to say, stuck right down the order there, Andrew, in ninth place overall. Yeah, not having the best of uh, races in this heat, Mikosi Academic. But uh, hopefully for him, we've still got the repercharge, loser's melee chance, whatever you want to call it, the chance for the drivers to get into the final. And hopefully Mikosi Academic will be able to do a better performance in that and get through there. But at the moment, it's not looking like he's going to make the final through this heat. And... Uh, yeah, not quite reaching the heights of where, what he did earlier in the season, as we've just got under three minutes to go in this heat here on the Stowe Circuit of Silverstone. Yeah, still a battle going on between Kralu and Little Regret 265. Little Regret 265, the American really closing up on the back of Kralu now as they come down the back straight, pulling out of the slipstream does the Frenchman and also about to come alongside and gets ahead of Little Regret 265, does the Frenchman. So up into fourth place for Kralu. Great bit of overtaking there, nice and clean, and keeping it nice and fair as well. Mr. Racing Line still in third place, but coming more and more under pressure from Kralu at the moment as well. And though despite that overtake, don't forget Little Regret 265. Don't count him out because he's a very, very competent racer. And I'm sure if it's anybody that can claw it back, it will be him. We'll see how things go, of course, as we come in towards the final couple of minutes of this race. But still, JJ, though, the Frenchman who has dominated the way. And uh, I have to say, Andrew, given the recent events we've heard in France over the past couple of days, uh, certainly something that will be lifting the spirits of uh, himself and indeed the nation as well. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's great that JJ has been able to come out today and still perform Kralu as well and uh, serving his country very, very proudly in this race. Let's hope it continues. 
Yeah, most certainly so. So Mr. Racing Line still there in third place. The Danish driver really putting some pressure now on, uh, really having pressure put on him, rather, I should say, uh, by Kralu, of course, in fourth place. But uh, D15, 1998, the Greek driver, we haven't really mentioned him throughout this race. He's had something of a quiet affair. But nonetheless, he's really coming under pressure now from Mr. Racing Line. Will he be able to hold off into the final parts of this race? No, he won't. Mr. Racing Line then gets himself up into second place and on towards the second rodeo, uh, podium place. But coming onto the rostrum now is going to be Kralu before too long as we come in towards this technical final part of the lap and around that sweeping left-hander. Mr. Racing Line goes a little bit too wide. D15-1998 keeps it back underway and keeps it fighting together. But Crady, though, surely is going to be thinking about a move as they come down in towards turn one, Andrew. Great stuff. These three really giving each other just enough room to keep each of themselves in this battle for second place. Really good stuff from D15-1998. One of his stronger performances in the casting series this year, as, as my memory probably serves me incorrectly if he's if he's performed as well as this previously i do apologize but really good performance from the greek driver as they nearly go three wide down the back straight into the left hander all still to play for for this second place it could go to any of these three drivers tom it certainly could do. I think they had a change of positions further down the order as well. Didn't quite catch who it was. It was Haas Gaming uh, versus GTB Famine who are having a little scrap there for sixth place at the moment with the Portuguese driver reigning on top so far. So coming in towards the final part of the lap. Will they get another lap as they cross the line? I think they will indeed. So one more lap remaining of racing here as you can see with the ticker tape on the left hand side of your screen. It is JJ's race to lose at the moment. He has got a comfortable lead out in front but who is going to get second place? Time will tell us to go through the left hander for the final time and head down in towards the back straight for the final time of asking. Down they come. How effective will the slipstream be? JJ leading the way. Mr. Racing Line still there in second place, but no one able to take advantage. So one would imagine that the gearing is not quite set up for these KF class carts to be able to launch an overtake. Crayley though, looking to challenge D15-1998, but Mr. Racing Line now coming under increasing pressure from D15-1998, but it is indeed going to be JJ. Then the Frenchman wins here at Silverstone, takes the first victory of the day here at the Northamptonshire circuit. Mr. Racing Line surely will hold on for second place. Indeed he does. And D15, 1998, the Greek driver rounds out the podium here at Silverstone. Fourth place, a valiant effort, but it was indeed Kralus for the taking. Little Regret 265 rounds it out in fifth place. That's your top five. And then it will be Haas Gaming, 96, who will finish in sixth place with GTB Famine, a dejected seventh on home turf. Midnight Rider, 32 in 8th place. And Makoji Academic getting it all crossed up and sideways, coming around the final corner, finishing plum last, and I'm afraid to say in ninth place overall. But what a thrilling end to the race we had there, Andrew. Really, really brilliant scrap there for 2nd through to 4th. And great driving from all three of them, and hopefully we'll be able to see them again. Serving up more treats for us in the later races. Congratulations, Mr. Racing Line. Brilliant defensive driving across those last two laps to hold on to that 2nd place absolutely fantastic what a treat we've had for the start of the day so 13 laps completed during that race duration i we expecting conditions to stay pretty similar pretty sunny and pretty bright but it is of course great britain it is silverstone anything can change and it usually does generally in britain as well so we'll wait and see whether the weather will take a uh, turn for the worse but uh, current conditions so far looking to be pretty promising i must indeed say uh, so that was the first heat of the day. We'll have heat B in just a few moments' time and a bumper-to-bumper -bumper grid as well. Looks to be absolutely fantastic. So, Andrew, let's take them through that. Yep, on pole, Nick Mikosi for this second heat of the day. Alongside him on the front row, GTP Jammy. Peelster 1 and Ning Dynasty make up row 2. Barrett 5 and GTR Venturi row 3. Chris W265 and T Kennedy 85 are on row 4. And it's Euclid 58 and Smith 1001 on row 5. Yes, indeed. So the carts all lined up on the starting grid, as we can see. We wait for the gantry to go, and indeed we are underway. So it's GTP Jammy leading away from Nick McCosey. Change of positions further back. T Kennedy 85 jumping Chris W265 and Euclid 58 getting ahead of Smith 1001. T Kennedy 85 has made a rocket of a start up into fifth. No, sixth place, I apologise, but it is still GTP Jemmy then who leads after the first corner, but not for long. Nick McCosey looking to mount a challenge already, but Ning Dynasty surely is going to have something to say about that as they come round to go on to the back straight for the first out of 
a potential 13 times. But an action-packed start there. GTB Jammy still leading the way. But Nick McCosey, though, the Australian looking to change that. And further back there, Andrew, we've got an absolute melee of action. Absolutely brilliant start from T Kennedy 85. Was up to third. Oh, is there almost 3-1? There's a bit of contact into the left-hander there, as I think. Uh, T Kennedy 85 got squeezed there by the drivers left and right of him. It's a shame because T, T Kennedy 85, the positions changing all the time, was up to third. Now he's in fifth place. Look at Chris W265. He's come up from, I think it was row four, and is now third. Absolutely fantastic first lap from the American driver. Incredible. Unfortunate for GTR Venturi, who's now down plum last after going off track. We did see that uh, just in the background of the shot a bit earlier on. But it is the Australian there, Nick McCosey, who has leapfrogged GTP Jammy. But for how long will the Finnish driver be able to take it lying down? I hesitate to say that he won't. Uh, second place, of course, GTP Jammy. Chris W265 in third place. And then it's Americans all the way down from uh, third until ninth place overall. Ning Dynasty in fourth. T Kennedy 85 in fifth. Barrett 5 in sixth. Euclid 58 seventh. Peelster 1 in eighth. Smith 1001 in ninth. And then GCR Venturi, the unlucky Spanish driver, sitting there in plum last and tenth place overall, I'm afraid to say, at the moment. But Nick McCosey there, he is absolutely honest, Andrew. Look how much of the track he's using and look how aggressive his driving is as well. He is pushing incredibly hard. He's using these dry conditions to his full advantage at the moment. Trust me, he, was, he would not be able to do this in the wet. Those uh, grassy banks soak up the water very, very quickly around the Silverson circuit. Believe me, I've been in those. They're not very easy to get out of. GTP Jammy are doing a great job to hold on to Nick McCosey in second place. Chris W265 is still in third as well. And uh, we've got to say for Nick McCosey, very, very good retaking of the lead. GTP Jammy put him under incredible pressure on that first lap. And it's going to be interesting to see if Jammy, as oh, Jammy runs a little bit wide there. And similarly, I think he's taking inspiration from McCosey's driving style by using all of the track and a little bit more now. It's going to be interesting to see if Jammy can close in Nick McCosey on the lead. Yeah, most definitely so. So further down the order, change of positions between Peels to 1 and T Kennedy the 85. That's a scrap going on. GTR Venturi making his way through the field, demonstrating that, of course, despite the incident, he has got some incredible pace behind him, already up into 8th place after just a lap following those incidents earlier on. But it is still Nick McCosey then who leads the way. Chris W265 in third at the moment. He's got a bit of company behind him as well. That orange cart you can see coming down the back straight at the moment before that left-hander. Very reminiscent, actually, of the full Silverstone layout of the Wellington Strait coming in towards Brooklyn. Through there they go. Chris W265 has got GTB Jammy just ahead of him now. So uh, Chris W265 actually really mounting a bit of a pressure for second place at the moment. We could have an American taking over from a Finnish driver for second place on the podium at the moment. We'll wait and see how that develops on, but he's got a little bit more ground to make up. And he is in that unfortunate position. I always seem to mention it during this commentary, Andrew. He's in that unfortunate position where he's going to have to attack and defend if he's not too careful. Yeah, but Chris W265, we know he he is a very accomplished driver. I'm sure he is up to, up to, the, up to the task, sorry. But we're seeing this classic thing, which I see in karting a lot, where the driver in second place is more having to think about defending that second place than going out for the win. Nick Mikosi now a fair way up the road from these three and it's going to be a titanic scrap now over the next uh, seven or eight laps or so depending on how much time and laps we get in this race. But I think this is our race now for the second place. Once again for the second heat in the row, second through fourth, looking like they're going to be serving up a treat over the next five and a half minutes. Yeah, lap times actually between Chris W265 and Jammy pretty comparable. But uh, given the slipstream that Chris W265 has got, he was actually a few tenths of a second quicker. And that really is very, very important. To start lap six, they come over the line now, heading in towards the right-left chicane. Very quick, a minor lift, I would say, on the throttle. But straight back onto the loud pedal before you come in towards the left-hander. It's a fantastic karting track, this stoke. Really incredible. As they come down the back straight now, will Chris W265 be able to take advantage of the slipstream and heading in towards the left-hander at the end? Will he be able to launch a move? Jamie needs to go a bit more defensive. He is doing so. He's keeping towards the uh, right-hand side of the straight a bit more as we can see it. And that allows Chris W265 
to uh, use the advantage of the slip stream, but not able to close up as much. And we can see how hard Jammy is pushing there, Andrew, because he's using so much more of the road than Chris W265 is able to. Yeah, it's quite interesting, it's especially through this corner here. Let's see if GTP Jammy does it again. Oh, I was because away. I was just about to say GTP Jammy taking a much wider line or much wider lines than Chris W265, especially through this last corner where we saw last time around Chris W265 using a much tighter line. I think it's giving him better uh, drive out of the last corner and down the pit straight. But at the moment, it's still GTP Jammy in second place ahead of Chris W265. We're looking at Euclid 58 now, who is trying to close down Peels to 1 as we switch back to the battle for second and third. It's Chris W265 up the inside of GTP Jammy. Who can hold it into the left-hander? It's going to be... Oh, I think it's going to be Chris W265 who will take the position. And yes, he does. Can Jammy fight back on the chicanes now towards the end of the lap? Doesn't like look like he can do so at the moment. Now, let's see what Chris W265 can do with clear air. Oh, no, but he's losing it. He's lost it out of the final couple of corners. And that allows GTP Jammy to overtake him and also Ning Dynasty as well. So a simple mistake there from Chris W265 launches him back down to fourth place, I'm afraid to say. And GTP Jammy re-inherits second place. But what a simple mistake that was. And you can see how hard Chris W265 was pushing and just how hard GTP Jammy was as well. There was a slight bit of contact there, I think, Andrew. Mm. But I don't know. I don't know if there was anybody to blame. I think it must have just been a racing incident. Yeah, it was pod to pod. It just looked like one of those things. And uh, once again, uh, maybe those different lines that uh, GTP Jammy and Chris W265 seem to be taking, uh, if you ask me. But still, well, we've still got three minutes to go. So Chris W265 still has the time, if he has the pace, to work his way back up to second place. But no doubt that will be an incident that will be talked about in the paddock afterwards as there's a spinner in the uh one of the the slower just before the left hander there not quite sure who it was i think it may have been smith 1001 he's had a trip to the pit lane already in this race i'm afraid um and it looks like things are getting any better for the american unfortunately i didn't see any positions lost and i believe smith 1001 is the only person who is a lap down on the rest of the field so uh, by the power of deduction i think that will, must make him the uh spinner unfortunately yeah, that, that would make sense as I see Chris W265 on that last lap is now up back up to third place. Uh, T Kennedy 85, I've noticed as well, has slipped down the order. He was, as I say, up to third place on the on at one point on the first lap, now down in ninth. Here's, here is uh, Euclid 58 again. GTR Venturi for company. Down the back straight they come. The uh, Spanish driver, of course, who ended up plumb last after a spin of course on the first lap and gets himself easily ahead of Euclid 58 while he's taking candy from a baby that was through the right hander after the back straight great bit of overtaking there up into seventh place we're getting some valuable points on the board for GTR Venturi of course uh, we'll have a qualifying race after this heat here at uh, the Stowe circuit at Silverstone and then of course we will go on toward the final race of the day but it is still Nick McCosey then who leads the way from GTP Jammy from Chris W265 in third place overall. Peels that they're having a bit of a lonely race. Well, I say a lonely race, actually. He's got Ning Dynasty not too far in front of him. Yeah, he's recovered well. He had uh, problems early on. I noticed he fell down the order a bit. He's now looking at the back of Ning Dynasty and potentially a fifth place finish in this race. I think Barrett 5 is a little bit too far up the road from this group. Just over one minute to go then as we stay with Peelster. Can he overtake his fellow American Ning Dynasty as they come through the what seems this this corner seems to just go on forever in these carts. I've got to say out it, of it now. I've got to say actually, having commentated at a uh, circuit called Blyton Park, which is based in Lincolnshire, it's very reminiscent of the first corner there. It was 180 degree, but it is at a slight angle as well as you can see. They don't go straight into it; they go in after a uh, right hander. And it's very reminiscent of that, I must say, or a left-hander, rather, I should say. So it's very reminiscent of that. But uh, anyway, still Pilsa then, looking to challenge Ning Dynasty as they come down the final straight uh, for the presumably last time. Oh, Ning Dynasty getting a bit sideways and a little bit out of shape. But that allows Pilsa to get himself ahead around the outside, heading in towards the right-hander. They go, great bit of overtaking there from uh, Pilsa then to get himself up into the fifth place overall Ning Dynasty down to sixth at the moment but I think it is indeed going to be Nick McCosey who will take the spoils here at 
the uh, Stowe circuit, of course, at Silverstone, Andrew, and you can't fault him at all. He's driven an absolutely dominant race. Well, it's been brilliant. He's used the battle for second and third and fourth places to his advantage. He's kept calm. He's kept going up the roads and he's pulled away from the rest of the field brilliantly. Brilliantly, A very, very professional drive and a much-deserved victory for Nick McCosey. Absolutely incredible. Do apologise for the uh, loss of stream at the moment, but there we are. Confirmation that this is indeed the final lap, so one more lap to go then. And uh, coming in towards the final part of it now is Nick McCosey. Still kicking up dirt and still pushing absolutely very, very quickly as well. His best lap of 52 and a half second lap. But it is indeed the Australian then, Nick McCosey, who takes the second heat victory here at Silverstone. A great bit of driving there from the Australian. GTB Jammy will romp home in second place. What a result for the Finnish driver after some earlier battles. Chris W265 finishes off the podium. So it is three different nationalities on the podium. Barrett 5 there in fourth place. We haven't mentioned him all race. He's had a bit of a quiet one, but he kept his nose clean and kept it facing in the right direction as well. Peels to finish in fifth. GCR Venturi, what a result from the Spanish driver, of course, who was plumb last after the first lap and has got himself up into sixth place. Nick Dynasty takes seventh, Euclid 58, all the way down in a dejected eighth place. T. Kennedy 85 will round it out in ninth place. And then Smith 1001, he will be the final finisher in this race absolutely incredible racing we've had here at Silverstone and a uh, flourish to the finish there for Smith 1001 but that's not of course not all the action we've got before the final we have got one more race the uh, last minute qualifying race here at uh, the uh, KF class for the GT Planet karting series at round six and then we will have the grand final for you and if there's anything like the hints have been it is going to be flipping action packed Andrew just a bit, Tom, just a bit. So we wait now for the last chance qualifying heat to start. And in just a moment, we'll tell you who is in this last chance qualifying. Yes, indeed we will. So the starting grid then for this race looks like this. Cralio on the front row, joined by Little Regret 265. Barrett 5 on the second row with Haas Gaming 96 in fourth. Famine in 5th, Euclid 58 6th, Makosi Academic in 7th, Midnight Rider 32 in 8th place, and Pilster, nine, uh, Pilster 1 rather in ninth, and Smith 1001 rounding out the field. That is a very, very competent lineup, and it's going to be very difficult to choose, Andrew. Absolutely, and not all of them will be able to make the final. Someone, uh, someone big's going to be missing out. We wait for the lights to go green. And there they go. It's Little Regret 265 leading from Kralu off the front row. Who's going to get the advantage into the first chicane? It's a good start from everyone. And it's an especially good start from Haas Gaming 96 from row two on grid three. Has shot through into the lead. Absolutely brilliant start from the Portuguese drivers. There's a bit of contact there between Little Regret 265 and Kralu. I think everybody's still going round. Indeed, they are. GTP Famine up to third place. As it's Haas Gaming 96 leading from Little Regret 265, Famine, Krelu and Barrett 5, Tom. Absolutely fantastic start, especially from Haas Gaming. Someone going around the straight there. That's surely, is that Midnight Rider 32? That's a Mikoji Academic, I apologise. Down to the last place. Oh dear, what a shame there for the Australian driver who's been performing pretty well, I must say, so far in this series. And unfortunately, it's come undone. He hasn't looked comfortable all weekend here at Silverstone. And just contact on the back straight has put pay to his race. He is going to have a very, very tall order to be able to make up the deficit to the rest of the field. But Haas Gaming leading after lap one. Little Regret 265 in second. Kralu in third. Barron down there in fourth place at the moment, Andrew. What a start there for the Briton. Really, really good stuff from Farron. We've seen over the course of the season that he can mix it with the best and here he is once again here at the Stowe circuit looking to get into that final the top two uh, we think go through into the final Kralu now up to second place Haas Gaming now down to third so the brilliant start the work done there kind of undone a bit at the moment as Kralu and Little Regret now battling for the lead and trading the lead as we go through the second half of the lap here are the leaders as oh, a little bit of contact there between Kralu and I think it was either Barrett 5 or Famine. No, I think it was Famine. Famine now down to fifth. And look at this, Tom. This is a scrap and a half. Any of these top five, in fact, sorry, it's the top four that will go through to the grand final. So of these five, someone is going to miss out, Tom. And I would not guess at the moment who it's going to be. I wouldn't want to put a name 
to the fifth place at the moment. Yeah, popping down to the bookies at the moment wouldn't exactly be a wise choice, I'll tell you that for nothing. Uh, coming down the bank straight, it is indeed GTP Famine who we're looking at at the moment. Still a change of positions a bit further up, I think. Uh, Haas Gaming getting the, or Crayley getting the better of Haas Gaming rather in second place as they come in towards the tricky technical final part of the lap. Little Regret 265 still leading the way. Crayley there in second place. Haas Gaming 96 in third. And GTP Famine at the moment still in fourth place. I do apologise again for the loss of stream here at Silverstone. Uh, once again, we'll try and get those technical issues resolved and we'll get some action pack racing underway, of course, at the moment. But what a uh, terrible race it has been for Smith 1001. And I think we might have actually lost a competitor. Indeed, we have. Makosi Academic isn't racing. So presumably that damage he suffered on that first lap contact there, Andrew, has been pretty terminal. Yeah, it's a really bad day for Makosi Academic. Everyone, even the best motorsport competitors have bad days and unfortunately for Mikosi Academic uh, it couldn't really be much worse for him today at Silverstone. Uh, Stone dead last in the heat and a spin. Didn't really look like his fault. It just looked like one of those classic lap one racing incidents and that's the end of his day today. Still little regret 265 then leading this last chance qualifying from Crayloo. Haas Gaming 96 in third GTP Famine in fourth, currently occupying that last uh, qualifying spot for the grand final, but can at Barrett 5 wrestle it away from him? There's a warning for avoidable contact to the uh, cart number 315, which is Peelster 1. Peelster 1 currently in seventh place, and not having the day I would have expected Peelster 1. He qualified well in his heat, but seemed to go backwards. Um, I think he had a bit of contact in that first heat of his but not advancing to the grand final at the moment with that seventh place and stuck behind midnight rider 32 yeah most definitely so so little regret 265 then leading the way from Crayloo, of course here on lap five out of 13 at the uh, stowe silverstone circuit and a bit of a wide line there from midnight rider 32 allows appeals to one to take advantage and also euclid 58 as well i believe so uh Bit of a shocker there for Midnight Rider 32. A simple mistake once again, running it a little bit wide. Has lost him a couple of places, unfortunately. And he is now down in the uh, second to last place of eighth position overall at the moment as we come across the line to start lap six. Little Regret 265 at the moment, still leading the way. And Famine, of course, the last of the qualifiers. As we mentioned, the top four uh, drivers here at Silverstone will go through to the grand final. And we are set for an absolutely fantastic grid in these uh, races of course it'll be the um it'll be a uh, famine at the moment who goes through barrett number five though i'm sure will be looking to make a change to that as uh, the carts continue to circulate round once again apologies for the loss of stream we'll get it back up and running again in just a few moments time and as if by magic it has done so still euclid 58 they're down in seventh place at the moment he's having a bad day at the office much like a lot of people here andrew I, is it the circuit is it the characteristics of the circuit that are catching a lot of people out do we think maybe so it's very different to what the karting series has visited very different to madrid where we were last time and this it, once again i know i keep talking about it this second half of the circuit it's very much one line through it's one of those tracks where if you get a little bit offline even in the dry it can be a real problem and you can lose a lot of grip and understeer is a big characteristic of this track i've found so i think some of the drivers are struggling with that a little bit and also it's tight as well it's tight through that second half of the circuit it's there's not much room to get the back end of the cart out at all and take many risks so maybe to those drivers that like to be a bit, bit more expressive and aggressive it's just not suiting them today yeah it really is not little regret 265 leads the way of course he's got a good i'd say half to half a second seven tenths of a second lead over his second place compatriot Crayloo at the moment Haas gaming 96 there in third place overall as uh, we progress onwards throughout this race and we'll wait and see how things continue as we come in towards the final few minutes of action pad racing for the last chance qualifier i will have another race of course after this and we'll see who will get through to the uh, form the grid for the grand final of course so the next race is going to be very uh, very interesting uh, after this of course i apologize sorry we are after the last chance qualifying session we'll go straight into the final there is not a uh, yeah, second last chance qualifying race hence the 
uh, title, but still a little regret. 265 leading the way from Kralu from Haas Gaming 96 at the moment. And Famine there holding on to fourth place at the moment. Had a bit of a, a rough running, shall we say, in the uh, first couple of heats did Famine, Andrew. But uh, he's really upped his game for this final and he, he's pulling out all the strings when it really counts. Yeah, and we know Famine is a big race uh, character he loves racing up at the front and we've seen i remember his racing at suzuka earlier in the season in the karting series he really likes to mix it up at the front of the grid and it's great to be seeing him doing so again two and a half minutes to go then you're looking at kralu and little regret 265 so here's a little battle for the lead of the race be interesting to see if kralu really wants to win this race because you know, these two very, very competitive drivers, but if they take each other out squabbling for a race win, they could lose qualification to the grand final altogether. So might just want to play this safe, guys, and make sure that you get to that grand final. And uh, so it's still Little Regret 265 leading from Kralu, Haas Gaming 96 and GTP Famine qualifying for that final. Peels to one looking to overtake Barrett 5 I think unless that is someone a lap down and I'm mistaken and indeed it is Peels to 1 up to 5th place now so Barrett 5 dropping back to this second half of the field who at the moment are just racing for pride really a long way behind GTP Famine in 4th you can see there on the long shot GTP Famine just going through the left hander at the bottom of the straight and it's just over one minute to go, so we should get two more laps in here, Tom. Yes, but, indeed. So things action-packed, as we can tell, further down the order. But uh, still the top four, keeping things composed, keeping things steady. Uh, no contact as far as we're aware between them at the moment as well, even though they are running very, very close on track, as you can see with the uh, circuit map at the top of the screen. Well, all running close on track, with the exception of Little Regret 265, who's really pulled out all the stops when it counts and is absolutely flying out in front at the moment as well yeah i think these two are pushing each other along little regret 265 and Crelu and i think Crelu's gonna have a go at taking the lead here late on in the last chance qualifying and a brilliant move up the inside Crelu is your new leader but little regret 265 fighting back now can he do it around the outside no Crelu takes the line takes the corner and takes the lead i mean it doesn't really mean much because both of them in those positions would qualify for the grand final anyway but maybe a bit of psychological warfare going on between these two at the moment Kralu wanting to get one over on Little Regret 265 before that grand final Little Regret 265 not giving this one up though this is the final lap now as the timer hits zero just this lap to be completed and then we will be going towards the grand final Barrett 5 still trying to get past Peels to one for that fifth place at the moment. Absolutely fantastic. Bound the back straight they come. Side by side between the two uh, drivers. Different nationalities. Completely different driving styles as well. But keeping things absolutely action-packed at the top two. Little Regret 265 still leads the way. Is Crayley though going to try and launch a move up the inside into the right hander? He is. Will he be able to pull it off as they're going towards the final couple of corners? No way through there for Crayley at the moment. It is indeed surely going to be Little Regret 265 who takes the victory. Round the final corner they come in the slipstream. It is Little Regret 265 who takes the victory ahead oh no it's Kralu I apologise Kralu takes the win from Little Regret 265 unbelievable by two tenths of a second Haas Gaming rounds it out in third and then GTP Famine becomes the last of the qualifiers unbelievable what a race Tom that was absolutely brilliant I actually hang on a minute I think there's been a little bit of confusion in the timing I think there's been a glitch just hearing in my ear that Little Regret 265 was actually the winner so Little Regret 265 on the line has just edged out Kralu. I mean, in the way, in a way, it doesn't really matter as they both were going to qualify for the grand final, no matter what the result was. But still, fantastic racing between the two of them, and that's just what we want to see in the GTP Planet, uh, GT Planet's karting series. What a race there from the the field in the last chance qualifying. Kralu, Little Regret 265, Haas Gaming 96, and GTP Famine will see them in the grand final. Yeah, commiserations to Peelster, 1, Barrett 5, Euclid 58 and Midnight Rider 32 as well as Smith 1001 who will unfortunately progress no further in the action here today at Silverstone. 
for from the last chance qualifier we head over to the grand final here at silverstone for round six of the gc planet karting series it's all to play for of course and this is what counts in the weekend and this is to be very very interesting for the championship as well let's wait and see how things progress with the uh, grid of course being the cream of the crop as it were throughout the day's racing here at Silverstone and Andrew we are in going to be in for an absolute cracker very very close field in this one let's take you through the grid on the front row and on pole position it's Jack 33 alongside him Nick McCosey row two is GTP Jammy and Kralu Mr. Racing Line and Chris W265 make up row three. Row four is Little Regret 265 D15 1998. Row five is Haas Gaming 96 and Peels for one. And then it's Midnight Rider and GTP Famine on row six. We wait for the lights here at the Stowe Circuit at Silverstone. And indeed, we are underway. A great start then from Jack, who gets away initially off the very, uh, very well off the front row of the grid. I'm afraid to say we've got a bit of a glitch with the streamer again, and that has meant that we are not able to continue the coverage through to turn one. We'll give you an update as soon as we can, but it looks initially there, Andrew, as if everybody got away fairly cleanly, and I think Nick McCosey was looking to launch a challenge in towards turn one. Yeah, we saw in the previous last chance qualifying race that uh, pole position has been beaten to the first corner in previous attempts at start. So it did look like Nick Picosi got a good initial getaway there. We'll see if he was able to convert that into a lead in a moment once we retain or regain the stream as we do now. It's, no, it's Jack 33 who's managed to convert pole position into a race lead at this point. Nick McCosey now second, Kralu third, GTB Jammy fourth. But look at GTB Jammy all over the back of Kralu at the moment as we go through the final corner to finish lap one all 12 carts still in the race and just look how close the field is tom anyone could still win this race really and that's not an exaggeration but it's jjack 33 leading from nick mccosey kralu gtp jammy and Haas gaming 96 well absolutely of course you'd expect that with the uh creme de la creme of the races here at silverstone and in the, indeed in the gt planet karting series today a bit of a change of positions potentially between uh Kralu and nick mccosey are we going to see a uh, change as well because also gtp jammy is coming into play as well for second place further action down the field as well d15 1998 under pressure now from chris w265 or getting ahead of chris w265 chris w265 going backwards and down the order now i'm afraid to say all the way down to 11th position up back into 10th after that but still what drama there for the orange cart of chris w265 in towards the final couple of corners they come now and nick mccosey and jay jack changing positions as we speak and every corner as well there seems to be a change of lead at the moment and don't forget of course there andrew Kralu in third place as well we've got a four-way scrap for the lead absolutely fantastic stuff there's been a spinner at the back of the field little regret 265 uh, i think got shuffled out of the pack through the technical section as who's that running wide jjack 33's run wide out of the first half and he's lost the lead to nick mccosey as we go on to the back straight now and is that J that's jjack 33 fighting back on nick mccosey and kralu looks like he wants to live in as well as three wide three wide who's going to take it into the left hand they somehow managed to get through the corner as the stream Freezes again. I've no idea, Tom, how those three carts managed to get through the corner without crashing into one another. But as you say, this is the creme de la creme. These are the best karting races on GT Planet. And uh, hopefully we'll get this stream back soon. Apologies for the uh, technical problems here at Silverstone today. It's beyond our control in the commentary booth. And uh, this is quite, it's quite tense waiting for who's going to be in the lead. And this is still only three minutes. We've still got we've still got seven and a half minutes of this to go, Tom. Blimey, O'Reilly, I have to say. So it's JJ then who leads the way from Nick McCosey from Kralu. And after all that scrap, we've got GTB Jammy coming into the forefront of things now as well. On lap four, down the back straight. Behind the back of Kralu as Nick McCosey retakes the lead. Will Jammy be able to launch a move? No, thinks better of it. In towards the left hander they go. And then in towards the final part of the lap. The carts come now as well. As we mentioned earlier on, it is very much one at a time as they come in towards the final couple of corners now. Jack leads them from Nick McCosey. The two white carts, don't be fooled, they are completely different drivers and have completely different driving styles as well as GTB Jammy and Kralu exchange paint and exchange positions as well. Kralu in third, GTB Jammy still there in fourth place, but the finished driver of Jammy there, Andrew, really, really looking to mount a charge as they come in towards the fifth lap. 
how many times have we seen this this season in the GT Planet Karting Series? These grand finals always serve up fantastic action. We're having another brilliant race here today at Silverstone. And look at this battle now between uh, Mr. Racing Line and I think it's Haas Gaming 96 in the red cart there, the deep red cart, the Portuguese driver. And not too far behind them as well, appeals to one and Chris W265 having their own scrap. As it looks like the top three are just starting to pull a little bit away, Tom. But I'm not going to put it past you or anyone else that one of those guys in fourth down to about eighth could still win this race because who knows what could happen with five and a half minutes to go. And what, of course, is this going to mean for the championship as well? There's still a championship at play between J Jack and Nick McCosey. Uh, Nick McCosey is having a very good run so far in this race. McCosey Academic, of course who I believe is some kind of compatriot to Nick McCosey. He's having a very tired run. Contact between the top two. JJ and Nick McCosey come to blows as we come down the back straight for the sixth time out of 13. In towards the left-hander, they will come in just a couple of moments. JJ pulls out of the slipstream. Nick McCosey on the left-hand side doesn't go defensive, but has that straight line speed advantage there, Andrew. But still Nick McCosey uh, defending his position from JJ at the moment. Unbelievable how much straight line speed that Nick McCosey had, even without the advantage of a slipstream. Very good work by Nick McCosey and his mechanics. They've got that cart set up very well for that back straight. They know how important it is to have good top end and good top speed. It's serving Nick McCosey very, very well at the moment because he's able to defend without defending, in effect, from the attacks of JJAC33. Still a long way to go as JJAC33. Oh, I think we've missed it absolutely absolute treat of an overtaking maneuver there Tom as JJack 33 manages to take the lead but he's run wide he's run wide through the uh through the hairp in the loop corner and now let's see what Nick McCosey can do with that good top speed and the slipstream I reckon he's going to be a, have a good shout at overtaking JJack into the left hander JJack 33 going a, bit, a little bit defensive on the inside and I think he's been able to retain the position oh, oh almost had a little bit of dirt being kicked up there by Nick McCosey. Somehow he manages to keep it or get it back on the black stuff. But this is unbelievable stuff here on the Sozak. And he's gone wide a little bit again. Brilliant driving from Nick McCosey. It's still JJ33 in the lead. Leaving on the ragged edge is Nick McCosey at the moment. Absolutely fantastic racing here today at Silverstone. Credit to GTP Farron as well, who's just got himself ahead of Peelster, but crossing back to the battle at the front place at the moment. Nick McCosey relegated down to second. Oh, bit of a corner cut there. Very, very eager line up the inside of Jajak. Will he be able to get ahead? No, he doesn't gain an advantage. Slots back into the slipstream once again, does the Australian. Jajak then still leading the way on lap eight. Further down the order, look at this battle going on, but Mr. Racing Line there and Chris W265, as well as GTP Famine, locking head to head at the moment. Still going head to head though. Nick McCosey retakes the lead from JJ, but takes it back again. Nick McCosey leads. No, JJ leads. Unbelievable through the left and the right hander. It's changing lead faster than we can keep up here in the commentary box through the left hander. Coming on towards the start, lap nine. JJ, then the Frenchman, leads the way from Nick McCosey. From GTB Jerry in third place at the moment. Crelu there holding on to a good solid fourth place at the moment. And Mr. Racing Line looking fairly comfortable in fifth as well. But absolutely unbelievable racing there, Andrew, through the uh, chicanes and through that last couple of laps. That was incredibly close. Absolutely unbelievable stuff. Two and a half minutes to go. And I tell you what, Tom, J Jack and Nick McCosey squabbling constantly, no matter where they are on track. This is allowing GTP uh, Jammy to close in on them. GTB Jammy is not out of this race yet for the race win as Nick McCosey uses that good top end to overtake JJack33 down the straight, but they're still side by side. They're still holding each other up. Just look at GTB Jammy, Tom. He's closing. He's closing on these two. It could be a three-way scrap for the leaders. Oh, but he's still off! He's off! Unbelievable! Off, 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 off out of the final couple of corners! I can't believe it! The Frenchman! Oh, he was having such a valiant run in this race! And just a simple mistake. We've been mentioning them happening throughout this race. And such a simple thing to happen for the Frenchman. He's still in third place at the moment, but that really has put pay to his victory charge unless there is a minor miracle in these final couple of laps. But uh, GTB Famine there still in seventh place. He cut the corner a little bit going through the left-hander as well against Chris W265. 
my goodness. What a few corners that was between Nick McCosey. What a few laps it was between Nick McCosey and Jay Jack. And unfortunately, it just came undone right at the wrong moment there. He is going to be very angry inside of that crash helmet. Well, once again, I think we might be having some... Uh discussion shall we say in the paddock after this race because uh jjack 33 and nick mccosey coming together there jjack 33 now has the attentions of his uh, fellow frenchman Kralu for a spot on the podium and there's 52 seconds to go we will get at least one more lap in and Kralu, you can see now how much he wants that podium he's all over the rear bumper of Jack 33 as they come down the long back straight now side by side. I think Kralu's going to edge out in the straight but Jack 33 now ducks behind trying to get a little bit of slipstream off Kralu's blue card. Can he sling one down the inside into the left hander? No, he can't do. Although did Kralu win? No, Kralu's still retaining that third position. 20 seconds to go and uh, I think we might just get one more lap in after this one as who's that side by side and going off spinning off again is that change 33 again yes it oh, is no what oh a what a disaster it's uh -oh. gone from a prevent potential where he's slipped all the way down to ninth tom and up and it could be 10th if little gret 265 is able to uh, get good drive off the last corner but j jack 33 i think a little bit of red mist has descended on the frenchman he's absolutely furious he's uh, uh, driving down by the pit wall i think he's uh, maybe having a word with his engineers and mechanics on the pit wall there. Not happy at all oh, with what what's happened in this grand final. What a rotten bit of luck it was there for Zizek. Unfortunately, again, a very simple mistake. What a shame. It ruined a, a very good race that we were commentating on here. But unfortunately, that is just the way the cookie crumbles. I was going to say that Zizek's car does look to have significantly more mechanical grip. But the race does indeed belong. Coming out of the final corner, it's Nick McCosey, the Australian, who takes the victory here for the grand final at Stowe. What a great result there. Second place goes to GGB Jemmy, the Finnish driver gets a podium. And third, it is Kralu, the Frenchman. Not the Frenchman we thought we'd see on the podium. But nonetheless, a great result there for him. Fourth place, Mr. Racing Line. Chris W265 in fifth. GGB Famine in sixth place. Pilster in seventh. Haas Gaming 96 in eighth. J-Jack a dejected ninth place, unfortunately. And Little Regret 265 rounding out the top ten with Midnight Rider 32 there, rounding out the grid in 11th position. What a race we had there, Andrew. That was incredible. Absolutely unbelievable. And how important could this event be for the championship come the end of the season. Nick McCosey takes the win, but uh, arguably in controversial circumstances, GTP Jammy comes home safely in second place and Kralu third. Well, that was spectacular. What a race. What a day's racing we've had here at Silverstone for round six of the GT Planet Karting Series. And it was indeed to fall Nick McCosey's way, of course, for the end of the day's racing for the final and I'm sure it's going to be everything um, that we expect to see at Willow Springs, of course, for round seven. That's where we head next time for the GT Planet Karting Series. We head stateside. And then, of course, we come back to Britain for the final round for round eight at Brands Hatch. But we'll see you next time for the uh, seventh round of the GT Planet Karting Series Championship. From myself, Tom Brooks, and from Andrew Mather alongside me here in the commentary box. We'll catch you soon. Take care for now, and we'll see you then. Ta-da!